Good morning, everybody. So, first of all, let me start a project that we will throughout this lecture we are going to do show you some uh, practical thing. So, starting the project, you know that we are working on the Windows WPF W Windows presentation form. So, I just click that one, select that application style project, give the name, it is a class demo, location, where, wherever you want to save that particular specific project, you can change if you want. And then say next, we select the .NET Core 3.1, that is more long term support, and then create the project. So, that will, you know very well that that is going to create one window with two files. One is the example file, which help us to lay out the graphical user interface and the other one is the .cs file, which can contain the code, which can run over the interaction of the user and the application. So, let us get back to our lecture. So, uh, a little bit review that we talk about last time and then we talk about GUI programming introduction, WFP part and XML controls. So, Windows presentation foundation started in 2000, November 2006 and this is mostly what you can say that we have the future of the Windows programming or the GUI programming in the C sharp or the Visual Studio on the Windows platform only, because this is not a cross platform. So, we need to instantiate the classes that is more like a GUI design set their properties like color, background color, what will be the size, width and height or different type of property that we can set on the graphical user interface components, then invoke the methods and then handle the event. So, these are the WPF programming steps that we need to follow. Again, we have a large number of GUI components for the layout, we have border, canvas, for a grid, panel, separator, scroll view, view boxes, window, dock panel and so on. So, all these are actually help us to build a layout. Layout mean window is a layout in which the components will be. How they are going to be arranged? Okay. So, these are more kind of a layout components. Then we have buttons that more interaction, the user can click on it or tap on it depending on the which type of application, uh, which part type of screen it is a touch screen or if it is only a simple screen then click or touch repeat buttons, then we also have data grids displaying the things, calendar, date picker, we have menus, context menu, you know over on the top of the bar, we have the menus, file menu, edit menu. So, we can create those things and then we can write the implementation details that once specific a menu has been clicked, then what your program is going to do and that code is going to into that CS file that is auto generated by the system. XML file, where we are developing the GUI components, graphical user interface, CS file or the C sharp file, where the code is going. So, whenever there is an interaction happen between the user and your application, the code is executed in the behind and that code go into that CS file. If I can just go back into that CS file, so this is our CS file we are talking about. Okay. So, this is our XML file, the XAML file, where we design the GUI and this is the code, what is going to be executed when there is an, a click event or maybe mouse over or drag event or multiple type of event that you can, I can, I will show you a few of them today. And then again, we have selection, combo box, sliders, these kind of a things. Then we have navigation, dialog boxes user interfaces, documents, input, we can get the input from the user just like console dot uh, get line, that is an input that is going to coming from the standard command prompt. So, we can also ask the user to type in some 
values inside the text box or rich text box or the password box. The password box is very clear. You know, we want to get a password from the user which is obscured. What the user is typing is not visible. It's just static or showing up over there. Then we can show the images or we can play some videos or sounds. So the first thing is GUI layout. All those buttons, input fields, check boxes, radio buttons, buttons going in different places, labels. So where they will go, where they will be positioned itself. So that is called, we have a window, a rectangle, where we are going to put our controls over there with which the user can interact. So layout, positioning of the visual elements in the Windows application, container of an element, initial placement and positioning and setting some values. These are some properties of those components, margin, padding, alignments. I will show you practically that how, what does it mean. So this is what we got in normally. I mean, if I just go back to my application and go into that particular specific. So if I just try to drag a little bit up here and just try to, what you can say that I just try to, um, where is my cursor, it's here. So I just try to rem make these things in one line, you know, so that we can only see what is we want to see. I'm just trying to putting everything in one line because that is also possible. We can do that. Okay. So now if I look at that, I have this particular specific window and if I look at that, this is the opening tag, this one. Uh, Windows opening tag and this one is the closing tag. So this is the window that what is visible here. <coughs> this window and if I just try to change that particular title, for example, this is our class demo. Okay, what's happening? Class demo, so you can see over there uh, so there's a MIA, I need to remove that particular specific thing here. So if I just say that you can see that title has been changed to the class demo. Okay. And then if I just try to run that application, hmm, it will just show me that particular specific window. There's nothing inside. There's a grid, but we didn't put anything inside it. So let it come and then I will show you a few things, putting a few things, changing some properties and then show you that how the things go. Where is that window? It is coming on my other screen. No, not here. So where is that? it is coming here. So you can see we have the class demo and then we have these values. So if I just try to make that particular specific thing more visible so that we can see the windows as well as the code. You know, we have that particular specific window here and then we putting this code here. Chain, close these things. So now we have that. The one more thing that I would like to tell you that in this particular specific, we have that particular specific grid. Starting tag and the ending tag and this is actually within the windows. In the windows, we can have only one child. 
we can't have like we have a grid and we try to make another thing here. For example, we have border, border, and I just close the tag, it will also automatically generate the closing tag for me. And look at that, this particular specific thing comes become blue. So it's saying that the property content is set more than once. Property content of window, because the parent is window, inside the window, opening tag, closing tag, inside we have a grid and then I also put a border. So two L childs exist now inside that window and then we got that blue line. These underlines are actually sometimes is a warning we can ignore, sometimes it is actually an error. So we need to understand what does it mean. So we say that the property content is set more than once. So property content of window can only be set that particular property is only be set one time, but now we have two child, so it is need to be set two times and that is not possible. So what we need to do, we either remove the border or we remove the grid. So only one child is allowed within the window. Okay. So what I do, I just try to remove that particular specific or maybe I say that border, remove both of them and try to put a border over here. Border and then I say. Now I just come down here in the windows, huh? this, is a, this is my windows tag and inside the windows tag I am saying that background and background what we say. Alice blue, so you can quickly see that that particular specific windows background has been changed. Now, I also try to make this uh, border brush to black and I also try to say border thickness to 1. And look, that's one tiny line is there. I didn't set the properties of the border like height and width. For the width, it is trying to cover the whole of that particular specific width, but height is nothing. It does not fill the height, but for the width, it is filling the complete window. And if you look at that, that's the black line just disappear when I say that the thickness to 1, when I say move to thickness to 0 again, that black line is disappeared right on the top of that particular space where my cursor is, you know. So I just try to make that 1 again and now we can give some properties of the height and width so that we can actually see and maybe we can change the background color so, so we can clearly see where that particular specific. Uh, so, I am changing the properties in the border, okay. So, this is my border, this is the opening tag, this is the closing tag and I am changing the properties. So, I say height for example 200, so now you can see that its height is 200 and one other thing that if you have noticed it automatically coming in the middle vertically middle, actually it is also coming in horizontally middle as well once we set the property of the width. Width again I say for example 300 and because we have the border, so we do not need to the background color, but if we say that background color light light blue. So you can see that. So we are setting some properties. We have window, inside the window we have the border and border we set some properties like what will be the border brush, border brush mean border color, okay. We say black, what will be the thickness of that particular specific border we make it 1. If by default it is 0, it is not visible at all. But if you change, change it to, for example, I can make it to 10. So it is changing accordingly. And then we say height and weight and then background. Now in the, we have 
talk about some properties. We have margin, padding, and then the alignment. We can align this particular specific grid to the left of the parent, to the top of the parent. So, we can align it whether horizontally uh, or vertically. So, if I do some alignment here, for example, I just try to because we are going to getting out of the screen. So, I just bring it back to the screen again, just press enter, okay, spaces does not matter. So, now I say that I want to put some alignment. I say horizontal. Now, it is we are talking about like this horizontal alignment. Horizontal alignment, I say right, it will go towards the right of the parent. Who is the parent? Windows. Inside the windows, if there is a space, sometimes there is no space. For example, if I just try to make that particular specific width, what is the width of the, uh, it is 800 width of the main window. If I just make it to 900, what will happen? Now, it is trying to align towards the right. You can see the border on the right side, but on the left side, we cannot see the border. It means that particular specific border actually go out of the screen from the right side, from, so from the left side. On the right, it is, it is right aligned, so we can see the border, but on the left side, we cannot see the border. It means that it is going out of the screen. Now, if that some situation comes in, what we need to do? Putting some scrolling. Yes or no? So, we can put some scrolling so that we actually we can see those things. We can see some scroll uh, uh, vertical scroll bars or horizontal scroll bars and then we can scroll around. Okay, so, let me bring it back to normal. We can say we come back at this particular specific point horizontal alignment. We say left, it will go towards the left. Whenever there is an error, it underlines that particular specific area with the blue color. Okay. For example, I just when I typed here, I say small. It applied at left, but actually it should be capital L E F T. And because it is selected, I just press enter. When it is done, that blue line is gone. So if there is an error in the example there will be a blue line. So, you need to understand that if there is a blue line, there is something wrong over there. So, what is wrong? You need to fix that particular specific problem. So, this is the alignment. Yeah, we have the alignment here. So, we have aligned left or right or center. Center is the default one. It will come into the center. Similarly, we, can, we also have the alignment of the, for example, I just try to make it right here and then we have the vertical alignment property. Vertical alignment property, property bottom, we can select that one, click over there and if I just try to move a little bit down, you can see that it is just trying to align itself to the bottom of that particular specific window. We can say top. it will go towards the top, top and right, top and left, center and left, center and right. So, we can use any kind of a combination here. Now, we have the other property that is the padding. Padding is something, if I just go back to my slides. So, this is our window and then we can have a border inside with different background color and height. By default, it is center, vertical and horizontal center. We can change the vertical property to top. It will go towards the top, horizontal towards the right. So, align the element in its container. Container which contain that particular specific element. Border is contained within the windows. So, the border is aligning itself within the window. So, we can have horizontal, horizontally what are the different possible values? Center, left, right, 
or the stretch. By default, it is already stretched, you know. The reason is that if I do not give the width property, it automatically stretches itself and try to cover the whole width of that particular specific container. Or vertically, again, we have the bottom, center, and top, and stretch. Stretching means trying to cover the whole area. Alignment again, horizontal alignment left, vertical alignment top, and then we also give some border color and the border thickness. Padding is an empty space within the element. Padding is an empty space within the element. For example, I come back here. Let's. So, we have that particular specific thing and inside the border I again put a grid or maybe another border I suppose. Let me put another border here. So, and then I try to make that particular specific background color, background color what? Aqua bit and we say height 100 and width is for example, 50 something like that and by default it is aligning itself to the center of the container because the outer border is containing the inner border. So, vertical and horizontal it is trying to align itself to the center that is fine. So, I just try to go back and say that I want to make it horizontally aligned to left and vertically aligned to top. Okay. So, I just try to put an enter here. So, you can see that in the border, the outer border we have inside another border and we are setting some properties. So, now as I told that padding, we will set the padding for the outer border and you will see the effect because that is an empty space or white space within the container. So, you we have the border and then we can see the distance. So, we can say padding, when say I say padding, I put a 10 point here. So, look at that, it try to remove, leave 10 points on the left side, 10 points on the right top side, it will be leaving the 10 points on the right side as well and 10 points on the bottom as well. So, if you say padding and one value, it will try to put the 10 point space on all four different sides, left, top, right and bottom, all four different sides because a rectangle. So, we have four sides, it will try to leave that space from all sides. For example, if I just come back here and make this particular specific value to maybe 500 and I also try to make the brush Huh? border brush green and then border thickness to 2. So, you can see clearly from here that this border that border is missing from here it means it is going out of that particular specific visible area number one thing clear. And now, if you can see it also showing me that there is a 10 point space here as well. So, visible area was, so it is that particular specific property in the outer border it is actually leaving the space and if I just try to increase that particular specific height to 300 as well. So, you can see as well. So, it equally leaving the empty space from all four sides that is the one. We and also tell ok we want to have a different padding on the left, different padding on the top, different padding on the right and so that is also a possibility, but we need to provide four different values here. Always start with the left and then go 
clockwise left top right and bottom so we can put some values here for example from the left i say 10 only from the top i say give me 50 and from the right side give me 100 and from the bottom again give me for example 100 so it is trying to leave the empty spaces according to whatever values why i am giving here i say this particular value first that is the left side and after that we can sometime we say how we i, I remembered which value is which so it is from the left clockwise left top right bottom so we are going into the clockwise direction for those sides clear so alignment and then we talk about the padding now we also have the margin property margin padding is the empty space inside the container margin is the empty space outside of the container so if i just set the property here for this one the outer border so i say margin and then i put again 50 so if i look at that within the container window is a container it is trying to force the container to leave a padding or it is trying to ask the i want to leave the empty spaces between me and the other things so when i say only 50 it means from the left top right and bottom it will try to have the equal empty spaces we can change that particular specific behavior as well but for that we need to change the values here for example i make it 600 and make it 900 so again you can see that it is trying to leave the same amount of values from all different sides that is 50 but now if i say that again top oh sorry left top right and bottom if we try to provide the all those four values i say 200 then 100 and then 300 it disappeared actually there is there is no space left for the visibility of that particular maybe we can try to remove it to make it 150 as well 150 So this is what we can say that our padding, empty space within that particular specific container. So when we say padding 50, it will try to remove those particular specific values from all four sides, left, top, right and bottom. Okay? and we need to remember that clockwise starting from the left go to the clockwise left top right bottom so these are the numbers four numbers values padding we can change that particular specific height and width so we can see that exactly the effect of the padding okay and then we once we have removed that particular specific thing then it will also try to cover the whole thing so once we don't have the height it is trying to cover the whole width but it is not going to cover the whole height as well margin empty space outside of the container we are setting the margin on the border but it is actually making the empty space within the window okay so you can see that here uh, again left top right bottom margins we can put over there height and width and now if we look at that that area is going out of the container which is out of the visibility then how we can solve it we can put our scroll view yeah. we put that particular specific border with in the scroll view so once we have the scroll view by default it will give me the value of the vertical scroll so we can scroll down and up we can see those particular specific borders and then we can if we want to also have the horizontal so we say horizontal scroll bar visibility is equal to auto if it is required show the horizontal scroll bar if it is not does not show me the scroll bar 
because in this case it is required because you know we need had to have some we have some uh, what you can say that area which is uh, outside of that particular specific visibility. So, definitely we need this scroll. So, it is appear the horizontal scroll bar as well understand. So, if I just try to come back here and then this is the border ok. If you look at that inside the window we have a border inside the border we have another border ok and then we can just try to take that particular specific thing. Uh, we control x I mean now there is nothing uh, control x. So, we are putting the scroll view scroll view scroll view and we control v. So, now you can see that we have those particular properties set we can simply scroll up and down and we can see the complete vertical view, but still the horizontal view is missing. So, what we can do we can come down into the scroll view and we say that horizontal scroll view bar visibility to I mean look at that here we have auto disabled hidden or visible. So, I say make it auto it means if it is required it will be shown if it is not it will not be shown. If I say disabled it will be shown, but we cannot interact with it uh, hidden not visible at all or visible. So, I say auto now you can see that. So, now I can even see the complete area using the scroll view is it clear scroll view. So, I just give you some like we have the height and width properties we look at the border I told you that inside the main window we can have only one child if we try to put two childs inside it it will give you an error this content property can be set only once. The same thing is true for the border as well in the border we can also have only one child as well we in the grid we can have multiple childs multiple you know childs can exist inside the grid. So, these are some layout components which help you to lay out. For example, if you want have multiple childs do you want to use the border no. Do so, we have this different way. So, this is another layout component that is called the uh, stack panel stack mean that we are putting the things inside either either vertically or horizontally. So, here I am saying that I am putting I have actually say that we have a border at that is our border with the background color and all that kind of a stuff and then we say stack panel that is a one child within the border and I can show you if you try to have another border for example, here uh, we have the border this this is the inner border with border within the border and I try to make another border here. border and close it. So, now, you can see that the blue line is appearing it means that there is some error in your XAML code. So, if I just bring my cursor over here it say the property child is set more than once the property of child of whom of course, the outer border that is set more than once and that is not acceptable. There are some layout elements which can have multiple childs yes like grid Okay. If I just put uh, do not put anything here for example, and insta instead of having that border here I put that into the grid hmm. I control x and I put a grid here grid and I inside the grid I put a border here. I can also put another border here no problem that is fine look if I just can close those borders for the grid it does not share me multiple childs are there inside the grid I have two borders it say that is fine. So, the some layout elements can have multiple childs and the other cannot child window only one child border only one child 
great, we can have multiple child. And similarly, we also can have multiple childs for the stack panel. Inside the border, we have one child that is a stack panel itself. And inside the stack panel, we have three buttons with different properties. The first button, I say the light blue, the height is 50, width is 150, horizontal alignment is left and then I say content is equal to left content, what will be the shown on that particular specific button. So, it show me that particular specific button. And the next value is going down that particular. So, this is what you can say that this is more like a, if I just try to this is actually become a invisible container, a row. So, next element will automatically glow below that one. So, it contain another invisible container here and put that particular specific another row you can say that and put the next element into that particular specific and similarly it is again making another one and then. So, it is arranging the elements vertically, stack panel. We can change that beh particular behavior, do not worry about that. Yes, we can do that. So, button, button and button, so they are arranging in the vertical order. Any questions so far? No? We still have time, I think that we can just continue. We can take a break a little bit later. So, controls and their properties. So, we have background, border brush, border thickness, contents, font size, font style. We can change even you know the, uh, the, the, uh, the text that is appeared in those uh, controls or the panels or the text boxes or the buttons. We can change that particular specific font as well, their size, their color, their weight, making them metallic, making them bold making them underline, okay. So, all that kind of a properties we can set, height, width, horizontal alignment, vertical alignment, name. We will come to back to that particular specific name a bit later. So, margin uh, and then we say maximum height, mix maximum width. You set the property of height and width, but you also say max height. For example, you can re, for example, the window can be resized, yes or no? If I just come back here, resized and now look at that when we say that the horizontal uh, the scroll view, horizontal scroll view auto, now it is not required, fine. So, maximum width and maximum height property. If we, we that particular specific element or the window visual component is resizable, then the max width and max height will make sure that the height of that particular specific element does not go build above that particular specific value. Okay? So, ye max width and max height in terms of the resize of that particular specific element, it does not go below above that particular specific value. Okay. Margin, we have already discussed about that. Then we have opening uh, tag or opening element and the closing element. Sometimes we do not need both of them. We can, we call it a self closing. For example, button, we can make it a self closing. We do not need to have opening and closing. Or we can have the like this one self closing. Uh, we have a button and then we can just put slash and angle bracket. So, we do not need a closing tag. That is self closing tag you can say that. So, these are the different way to do the things. For example, you can click on that particular specific button. So, when we click on the button, uh, for example, I just come back here, where is my, yeah, here. So, this is I just try to uh, rearrange a few things here rather than you know making that particular specific thing. Uh, I just close it down 
and then just try to show you a few things here. For example, I just remove that complete part and and close it down. I uh, have a border and then we say border brush that is black border thickness that is 2 and I say background aqua or a little bit white okay that is fine and inside I have a stack panel stack panel no stack panel and inside the stack panel I try to have a label label and uh, then we have a content content my label and because this is a self closing you can see that you can see that particular specific text. and if I look at that if when I when I am selecting here it show me you look this is the invisible container it or row in which that particular specific label is actually existing stack panel vertically down 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 every next element is going to be below the previous one okay and then we can say that um, uh, horizontal alignment because vertical alignment is center not center we I need to first select and then say center so it's coming to the center and then I say put a button here inside the button I say content I say my button and then this is a self closing and look at that is try to cover the whole screen maybe we can say that I just want to have that particular specific uh, what you can say that uh, width property width only 150 or one yeah. 150 and then I put a margin look left I do not need to worry I can just put a comma and then I say from the top I want to leave 50 points and then from the right I do not need to worry and do not need to worry is it possible no we say that we need to some put some values over there so maybe I say put 10 10 and 10 so look now from the top it is trying to go down a little bit and we have that particular specific I am recording it so okay. So we have that now we can also have one more property that is click and if we look at that all these these uh, these are the uh, you know the, the lightning sign they are actually the events that we can handle. For example, we have a click, clip to bounce, oh no, 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 it's one. Uh, mouse double click, uh, single click or double click, previous uh, preview mouse double click and so on. So I say click and when I say click, look at that in the bottom it says new event handler. You want to create a new event handler for that particular specific click and if I press enter actually it is going into that particular CS file and create that particular specific method over there. Remember the methods? Method which can have private return type, huh? the access it is a private method. What is going to return? It does not return anything. This is the name of the method and then these are the arguments arguments mean sender who is the sender who from where that click event is being generated from that button so actually sender is the button itself I can show you for example I come down here and then of course uh, I mean from where what are the arguments if there are some values inside it so I say sender sender is actually an object say object because we do not know whether that particular specific click event is coming from the label or the button or the text box or where. 
so we give a generic object is the parent of all the classes inside the C sharp. So if the object I can cast, I can convert that object into the button. So I just make a button variable here, button and I say that is equal to new and I need to cast it to into the button and sender. So what I am saying that sender which is actually a button, it is send that particular specific click event here. So sender is actually that button which for on which the user has clicked. So I convert that into the button. So now I can change the properties. We have the content property, we have the background property, maybe I can change some of the background one. So I say button dot background. Now I need to know the colors. Colors, yes, dot, for example, red. Is it so? Now the get the system definition of the, okay, so we need to background brush, okay. So it is actually uh, the brush, brush dot brushes not brush uh, brushes dot I say gray or maybe red okay so now because that particular color is actually it's a brush that's changing the color so I say red so now if I just try to run that particular specific class again, so of course it will be a different layout now. Where is going to come on my this screen? Yes, it is coming on this screen. I need to bring it here. So yeah, you can see that. When I click on that particular specific button, no, nothing is happening. It should change the color. I say I'm taking a, so when I come down, oh actually my, my cursor is over there, so that's why it does not show me, but actually it has changed the color. When I, when the cursor is going up there, it automatically showing you a simple specific color. Again, these, these properties or these behaviors are coming from the button class which has already been defined. So the color is changed. Now one thing is very much clear that if you want to change the properties or change some values inside, for example, we have the label and in that particular label we want to change the value. We need to get that label as a variable inside the code and if we can't, we cannot change, do anything. That label variable, uh, sorry, label object or label instance exists in the system window instance exist, border instance exist because look at the border is there. So all these elements that we have defined here, I just try to make it here and then come down here and go to the, so we have the window, we have the stack panel, we have the label, we have the button. All these instances of these classes exist in our program. Now the point is can we access them and what is the way to access it? To way to access it that first of all we need to give you know that name property. Remember that this is the x name so name property so we need to give the name property here because we are providing a name. So, I come down here, name, now we can provide a name, for example, whatever, this is the title label or maybe we can say that title label, whatever uh, specific uh, naming convention we can use, title label, that's 
object or the instance. So, I give them the name. Now, how I can access that particular specific thing inside the code? Okay. So, what is that? Come back to let me where is my other So, I have given that particular specific name property and then I just come down here again I just uh, stop that particular because these kind of a things are not going to be quickly visible or quickly doable or uh, changed in that particular specific thing. So, we need to recompile these things because we are writing the code. So, here we are in the window class. Okay. So, in that window class I am making a variable label just like a label in the example we have a class which exists in that particular specific uh, WPF uh, libraries. So, label so I give them a name that particular specific variable and now inside that window initialization because here in this main window initialize component actually it is creating all those component windows variable or windows object and then we have the border object then we have the stack panel object then we have the label object then we have the button object. So, all those objects are being created at this point. If we try to access it before of course, they does not exist how we can access them. So, we need to write try to access them after the initialize components. Okay. So, now what we can do we can say label where is label is equal to find comp name find name if we try to find an element that has the provided identifier name we set the name property and then we have a simple find name method inside the windows and we can find that particular specific so we need to provide the name here it look when I just say that this it need a string name. So, I say uh, label it is L E or E L let me check L A B L E or maybe we can change it here that is always the problematic. So, I just control s here and then come down here. What is it saying that now represent, uh, represent test as a square of the UTF code units cannot implicitly convert the object to the system dot control dot label. So, this particular fine name is taking that object and give me as an object class reference. So, what we need to do we need to explicitly convert it into the label just we did for the button as well. Okay. So, what we can do here we come right in the beginning we put the parenthesis here and then say label. So, now what we did we assigned a property of name to a visual component in the XAML visual component we have assigned the name property and then we are trying to access that particular specific name property using the find name actually we are actually we are accessing the instance or the object of the label and then assigning to a variable because now we have the variable we can access it we can change it for example, I just try to go back here and again assign the value. Uh, to our uh, border as well name and then I say border okay. and then I come back here again if I want to access the border I need to have a border class object border border and then the same thing that we have done here we are going to do the same thing here. So, that we can assign some border is equal to 
border, find name, and then here we can provide border. I just come back here, change that border dot border brush to brushes dot green. Okay, so I am just changing that color of the border and then I say label dot content is equal to content property I say that changed in button click. I just try to run that particular specific So now the border color is black, label contents is my label and then the button color is not red. So I just click on that particular specific button. The border color has been changed to green, the contents of the label has been changed and that so. What you need to do, you need to keep them in mind, yes when you are defining the GUI you make sure that if you have a, a example so we can clearly show all those things properly and things. Now, once you have designed the GUI, it is not only that you are designed the GUI and then you say yes I have done it, no it is not that. This is the one part of your application, the graphical or the visual layout, the visual of your application, how it will look like, how the user is going to interact. Even if I do not put anything in the behind that code, what will happen? That layout is there, user is going to click on that button, nothing happen because we have not defined that particular interaction yet. So once we have defined the GUI, well now we need to understand, okay, which components I need to access inside the code, which components? And all and every component or each and every component that you want to access in the code, you need to give the name, you need to set the name property and you need to make the variables and need to initialize those variables and making a bridge. So GUI components, they will create the objects, label, border, button and everything. Assign the name property, create the variables here. Huh? If I just try to come back here into the code, we make the variables then we assign those using the name property that we have assigned in the XAML, we are connecting these variables with the actual objects which has been created in that initialize component method. And then we can access those variables, we can play all the properties that you can set in the XAML, you can do it here as well. So that is how we can design the GUI and then we what you can design the interaction between the user and your application that once the user is going to interact with your application what will happen and that is going where we need to write the code. Okay? So let us have a break now, huh? earlier it was too early and then we will talk more about the different components with different properties how we can set those things. Okay? Yeah. Okay, I need to stop that video.